Hello and welcome to the Ferguson Library's Introduction to Basic or Basic Microsoft Excel class. Uh, I'm Frank Scornia. I am the digital librarian here at the Ferguson Library for Adult and Information Services, which means that I handle a lot of our computer classes. I schedule our computer classes and I'm going to be actually teaching them all through this month of uh, April while we're all working from home as well as uh, handle our digital resources, so our ebooks and our uh, databases. So if you have any questions about those, you can always go to the Ferguson Library website and chat with one of our librarians. So this afternoon, we are going to be looking at uh, basic Microsoft Excel. If you haven't already, download the, uh, the handouts. There's going to be two handouts for this class here at the link right above my head over here. Uh, those handouts, uh, there's, there's going to be basically the uh, the handout with kind of the exercises that we'll work through and some basic information, as well as an Excel spreadsheet that we're going to do some formulas practices on. So, uh, some quick things to kind of get going when we're here on the YouTube platform here with this live streaming. If you have any questions, please put them into the chat. Um, I have this set so that you should be seeing this pretty soon after I'm speaking. Yesterday there was a bit more of a delay than there is today, but today there shouldn't be that much of a delay. So I should see your questions. Uh, your questions should match up pretty closely to when you ask them to when I or to what I'm covering at that time. Um, I will get to your questions when I feel there's a good time to pause and start working on the questions there. Uh, so don't just keep sending it there and such. I will see your questions. I may acknowledge I see it. I'll get to it there in a second. Uh, but if you do have any questions, drop them into the chat, and I will try to answer them as we're working here in Excel. Uh, the other thing is uh, we're going to take a little bit kind of slower pace on there and such because we're not going to uh, – what I'll be doing is most of you are probably going to have to switch between watching the stream here in your browser window and changing over to Excel to kind of work on the exercises. So I will kind of set aside times as we're working where I will kind of demonstrate through a skill that we're working on, and then I'll let you go – uh, go and practice it yourself in Excel. If you have any questions during that time, I'll be available to answer questions. I'll give you three to four minutes uh, for each of the different skills to kind of go and practice and work in an Excel. Uh, if you if you are having some difficulty with something that you're working on there, uh, ask the question in the chat, and then I will re-demonstrate it again uh, for the viewers here on in my own uh, Excel. So with that said, uh, what are we going to be looking at covering in this class? So what this class is going to cover is that we're going to be looking at basic Microsoft Excel interface and the terminology. The interface is the, uh, the software and the tools that you use on the software, what you click and where they're located on there. We're going to take a quick look at all of that and the terminology that Excel uses. I will be, if I think about it, I will explain if I seem to use some unusual terminology. Um, if not, if there's a phrase that I keep using or a word that I keep using that you do not know, uh, please ask in the chat and I will define what I'm saying. We're going to look at how to open, close, and create new worksheets and, uh, work and workbooks. We're going to look at how to enter and, enter and edit data into an Excel worksheet. So the, the very bread and butter of working in Excel is actually putting data into it. So we're going to look at how to do that. We're going to look at how to select data in an Excel worksheet. We're going to look at creating charts which are graphs. Uh, they call them charts in Excel. And we're going to look at the basics of writing formulas. We're not going to do very advanced formulas. We're going to do some basic arithmetic. But we are going to be looking at just the start of writing formulas. There's going to be, if there's thousands, or at least hundreds of different formulas in Excel. We can't cover them all in any of our classes. But at least I can introduce you to the idea of what formulas are and how to start writing them there. Um, and then in our next class next week at the same time on Wednesday from 2 to 4, I'll be doing our intermediate Excel class. Uh, we'll look at a couple different formulas at that time too. So with that going, are there any questions so far uh, about uh, what we're going to be covering in the class before we start diving in and starting to take a look at Excel? All right. So we are going to first jump in and we are going to take a look. So this is what they call the backstage view of Excel. This is the, the front page. This is when you open up Excel for the first time or any time you double click the Excel icon on your desktop or in your uh, from your start menu. This is what you see. I, I should also mention I'm using uh, Microsoft Excel 365 from Office 365 here. Um, this is very close to Office 2016 and Office 2019. So if you're using Office 2016 or 2019, 
everything that you see here should be pretty close to what you see on your own screen. If there's something that's in a different place or you're not certain, uh, ask in the chat and I will try to figure out kind of what the, uh, the difference is and try to explain, show you kind of uh, how to do it and what the version that you have. Uh, earlier versions of Microsoft Excel, Microsoft uh, Excel 2010, 2013, uh, they do look slightly different, but most of what we're working on here and such should work the same in current and slightly older versions of Excel. Uh, so this is the what they call the backstage view. And the backstage view is just kind of like your, your, uh, your landing page of when you start working in Excel. So when you open it up, it gives you the ability, it shows uh, like your recent files that you worked on. So you can kind of see a bunch of the things that I've uh, been working on uh, lately here on my computer at home. Uh, you get some uh, options to kind of jump into like creating a new blank workbook. Usually what happens is you'll come in and you'll click this double, the, double click on this blank workbook icon right up here on the top left. Uh, eventually we're, that's what we're going to do. Don't do it yet. Um, but this is kind of your typical start for working in Excel. But they do offer some other things like they do offer a set of tutorial uh, things going on here. So this would be a great thing if you want to kind of continue your learning in Excel and these are available in your uh, file here or into your, in your office here. You can kind of walk through some of these tutorials here, including some of the advanced things. So things like pivot tables, which we do in our advanced class, which unfortunately I will not be teaching because uh, I do not normally teach that class and it's not something I'm prepared to do. So we're only doing the basic and intermediate cl classes during the session here, as well as some different templates here. Some other parts of the backstage view is our uh, toolbar over here on the left side. And so this toolbar allows us to, we have our home area. This is when we open it up, when we end in the home landing page. Uh, and we go down to new. This allows us to, come on, new, there we go. Uh, this here gives us our, our new file kind of uh, entry here. So there's that new blank workbook again where, you, where we're going to be starting. But then also access to all the different templates that uh, come built into Excel. Uh, moving down, our open uh, directory. So if you wanted to open a file that you've worked on before, um, a lot of times if it's something that you worked on recently before, it would be down here in your recent files, but if it's not, you can always go here to open and you can then browse to find it or it might show up uh, over here. And then we have some of our other tools here. So we have things like information. So this is the information about the workbook. Um, it will tell you um, you're allowed to like, protect the workbook. So if you have other people who are going to be working in the workbook, uh, you can kind of limit what changes they can do, what they can see, how they can interact with the workbook on there. Uh, version history. So if you make changes you can actually uh, that you don't want to do, you can actually go back to earlier versions. Um, and then just kind of some properties about the file. So this is just your basic information about the file. Most cases you won't need to really worry about this area here, um, but it's there for, uh, for reference if you ever need to kind of get that information. Then we have our save and save as. Now, since this is a brand new Excel workbook, if I go to save, you can see it jumps automatically down to save as. The first time that you save a file in Microsoft Office, it's always as the save as. And what the save as does, it allows you to choose where on your computer you're gonna save the file and the file name that you're gonna give it. Uh, once, once you've saved it for the first time, right up here on the top, you can kind of see that it says book one Excel. The file name that you give it will show up right here where it's book one. In fact, let me do that here. What I'm going to do is we're going to go save this. This is right now in my documents folder. Um, if I wanted to, I could always change where it's at by clicking the browse button. And so we're in my documents folder here. I could go to my desktop if I want to and save it on my desktop. We're just going to save it in the documents and I'm going to call this basic Excel. Uh, and I'm going to just give it today's date. Uh, today is April 1st. It's April Fool's Day, everyone. How's everybody doing? Okay, so we are going to, I'm going to save it. And now you can see, whoops, actually, let me go back. <laughs> uh, and so if I go back here to say, oh, save just does save. I'll go back here to save as, back to where I was before. You can see right up here now, it does have uh, the new file name that I just put into it there. We're going to go a little bit more over uh, saving and opening things a little bit later in the class. So right now, I'm just kind of showing you these things here. Our print function, so when you want to go print your, uh, your spreadsheet, right now, because I haven't entered anything into the spreadsheet yet, there's nothing to print. So it's telling me, hey, we don't find anything to print. What do you want? Why are you giving me this option here? But um, uh, this is where you would find your print options there. So being able to do like which pages you're going to print, uh, how many copies you're going to print right up here, uh, which printer it's getting sent to, uh, and basically like the size, like is everything going to fit onto one page, etc. Printing from Excel can be a little complicated. I'm not going to really go into depth with 
in this class here and such. If you do have questions about it, there might be some time at the end of the class that I might be able to answer your questions if you ask them in chat. Um, but it's just something you generally have to experiment. If you're going to print an Excel spreadsheet, plan to print it a couple times until you get it looking the way that you want it to look, because it's never easy to get it right the first time. And then some other options here, being able to share it, whether you're sharing it to like OneDrive or emailing it as a PDF or Excel spreadsheet, there's different options that are available there. Um, publishing it, exporting as a different format. There's a bunch of different things beyond kind of the scope of what this class is covering. I do encourage you to, at some point to go in and kind of explore kind of what these different things do and how you can work with them on your own computer. Uh, and if you have any questions about that at a later time, uh, feel free to send us an email through the Ferguson Library's Contact Us form on our website, or you can ask us in the virtual chat, and we'll try to answer it there too. So this is the backstage view. Uh, moving on, continuing the tour of Excel and Excel's interface, we're going to go into a, uh, a new blank workbook. So I'm going to double click here on blank workbook. And what this does is this takes me to a blank uh, worksheet. So Excel organizes its, um, uh, its tools in you have a workbook, which is the whole file that you're working with. So everything that we're working with in here is the workbook. When I save this file, uh, it will uh, save it as a workbook. Uh, when I um, uh, eat, a workbook can be made of individual sheets. And you can see right down here, I have it saying sheet one. If I wanted to, I can add another worksheet. And so what happens is what it means is that I can basically have two different pages of the of all these of this grid here of all these different worksheets on there. A workbook is made up of multiple worksheets. So that's what I mean when I say worksheet and workbook. So in this worksheet here, we have our editing spreadsheet area, this big, huge thing. This is the main meat of Excel. This is where we're going to do all of the work, essentially. Um, above this here, we have our formula entry bar. And most formula entry bars, I actually have mine extended. I'm going to actually shrink it down. We'll look like this. You'll have a single line kind of going through here. Uh, and let me know how the quality is doing. I'm getting a little some warnings from, uh, from YouTube on this here. Uh, and it might be just that I'm trying to do the, the super low latency. Um, but yeah, let me know if this gets kind of stuttery or juddering or something on there, or it's delaying. Um, thanks, just because I can't really tell what, really from my end on here. But getting back, we have our formula entry bar. So this is where you'll actually uh, enter in formulas or edit formulas uh, as we see them there. We'll get to that later on in the class. Uh, and then right above here at the top, this is what's known as the ribbon. And the ribbon is the kind of is the standard navigation system that ex that Microsoft put into Microsoft Office since Office 2007. So it's been in there about 13 years, 13, 14 years now. Um, and so people have gotten used to it. It was actually there was a there was a lot of um, uh, kind of criticism and a controversy when they first introduced it. But it. Um, but people have grown onto it there. And so the ribbon is this large box up here with all the different tools that we need to work with and interact in Excel. Uh, so the, the ribbon is made up of a bunch of different tabs. So we're in the home tab right now. You can tell because it's home is underlined there. And then we have our different tabs. We have an insert tab, page layout, formulas, data review, uh, and so on. Uh, the home tab is where we're going to spend most of our time uh, in today's class. Um, and then in, in the next class in intermediate, we'll look at some of the things that happen in some of the other tabs on there. But some of the kind of commonly used areas that we have here in the home tab is you have our clipboard functions over here. So this is where we have copy and paste. Uh, so if you want to cut, copy, or paste things in Excel, copying and pasting in Excel works a little bit differently than it does elsewhere in Windows or in Microsoft Office. Um, so here, uh, and I'll, I'll kind of show this, those intricacies a little bit um, not so much in this class, we actually do it more in the intermediate class. So we're not going to really look at copy and pasting, but just know that it does act a little bit differently in Excel than it does in, um, in some of the other programs out there. We have our font choices. Um, most people don't do a lot with fonts in uh, Excel. They just want something straightforward with the numbers and be doing the calculations. Uh, the most I ever really, the most I do tend, I tend to do with fonts in, um, in Excel is I'll change the colors and the highlighting here. So I'll use these two buttons here. Um, so we're able to change like the, the background color of the cell or we can change the font color that's in there. 
Or I'll also use, this is the borders um, function here that allows you to kind of put lines around the different cells to kind of help organize kind of things. Uh, I'm not going to really cover it again too much in this class. I keep talking about all the stuff that I'm not going to cover in this class, but uh, I'm not going to cover it too much in this class, but I do encourage you either through the course of this class or in your own experimentation, kind of play around to see what kind of different things the borders do to kind of see how it works uh, in, um, uh, as you're working with Excel. Moving on, we have things like alignment. So this is where how the text shows up in the cell, whether it's centered or left or is at the bottom of the cell or at the top of the cell. Wrap text allows you that if you type something into the cell and it runs over the edge, if I click wrap text on here and such, it will make the box larger and allow the text to kind of go down to the next page or next line on there. So that's kind of a useful thing to know because uh, sometimes you enter entering things that kind of run off at a long distance there. You can also resize um, the cells. And I'll get into that when we start working on entering uh, data into Excel. Uh, moving on, numbers, being able to kind of change like what sort of number, uh, what type of number you're entering into the cell because uh, Excel can treat different numbers in different or different types of numbers in different ways. And just kind of give you a sense, we're going to go look at the menu here. So general is there's no format. This is just your general straightforward entry. This is the default. This is how things enter getting entered into Excel. Then you have things like numbers or currency. So number will behave like a number. It'll usually be on the right side of the cell. Um, and it will, and Excel will recognize it as a number. So it will do things like, it will allow you to do math and, um, and do certain number functions on a cell that's marked as a number. Uh, currency uh, actually puts in things like the dollar sign and usually limits it to two decimal places on there. And it will throw in sometimes little formatting things. Like if you're in a negative there, it might show it as red or in parentheses to show that it's a negative entry. Uh, same thing with accounting. So these here will help deal with kind of number or money kind of things that you enter in. Uh, dates and times. Uh, Excel can actually do math with dates and times and help keep track of that kind of information. If you enter something in as a like a date and then you do like a plus one to it, instead of just adding like one to like, it will actually increase it to the date. So like if I did like, I put in yesterday's date in here and I did a plus one, instead of it saying March 32nd, which doesn't exist, uh, it would say April 1st, but yeah, um, it will say April 1st on there. So it's able to do math as long as it knows that it's date or time. Percentages, fractions, scientific, these here kind of change how the, how the number displays in the box. Um, and then text means that you're actually putting letters or other alphanumeric characters in there. You're putting it as text and not treating it as numbers. Uh, so there's just some different things. Again, as you continue to work with Excel, kind of dive in and kind of play around with, with these different things and kind of see what they do. Um, you can't really ever break anything. It's hard to break something in Excel. Um, if you do ever break anything, you can always use the undo button, which is up here on the very top left uh, by the, uh, the save icon up here. So uh, you can always undo, and you can see if I undo this here, it keeps it undoes like the series of actions that I've done. We have things like styles and conditional formatting. These are things that we'll actually get into in the next class, so we're not going to really kind of go over it much here. Cells, how you behave. Each of these little boxes here, and when they say cells, that's what each of these little boxes mean. They're cells, and so that's what this here covers here. And then editing, like being able to do sort and filters and like auto subs. There's a bunch of different things in here. Uh, some of the other kind of common areas that we use in Excel often are, uh, if we go to the insert tab, uh, this is where you can insert in pictures. Uh, this is where we'll be coming in, we'll be looking at things like charts when we actually work on creating graphs here in Excel. Uh, this will be the area we're working on. And a variety of different kind of ways of doing analysis with the data that you've entered into Excel uh, here in the insert. And what it does is it just inserts a space onto your worksheet where these things will exist. And we'll see that when we get to... Uh, working on that part of the exercises. Uh, moving on, um, insert data, we have the data tab. Uh, the data tab is where you work with, what does it mean? Do you actually work with the data that you've entered in Excel? This is where you find our sort and filter functions, which we'll be covering in the intermediate class. Uh, and then other data tools, which we're not gonna really cover in any of our lessons here, but these are just kind of things that we do find. And then there's also the formulas tab here. So formulas tab, uh, is a place where you're able to look up and find like a bunch of different functions and formulas in the formula library and kind of figure out how you want to do a certain mathematical or a certain 
uh, programming trick in Excel. So that's where this here exists. So we're going to go back to our home uh, tab in our uh, uh, the home tab on our ribbon. And if we look at our, the handout that uh, you all should have, the, the basic Microsoft Excel uh, handout here, and you'll see uh, kind of moving down at the bottom of the first page, I just have a little bit of some Excel formula basics. When we start covering formulas, that will be a, a useful thing to kind of look at uh, and, and use when we start working on the functions and the formulas. But we're actually going to the second page and we're going to start looking at kind of the exercises here. So the first thing that we're going to look at now is we're going to look at how to enter data into a worksheet. Uh, this is the, again, the bread and butter of how uh, of how Excel works is you go in and you plug in a bunch of numbers and you organize them and then you have it do your math or do whatever sort of sorting or filtering that you need to do with the data that you enter in. Um, and you can enter anything into Excel. It doesn't just have to be numbers. It doesn't have to be math stuff that you're doing. Uh, people use Excel to keep track of um, like contact information. So things like names, addresses, phone numbers, email addresses. You can store all that in there. People use Excel as like a mini database setup, so they they organize it as a, as you would have a database, and that's how you also get things to be able to use for things like mail merge, uh, which we'll be looking at in the Office Integrated class uh, later on this month. Uh, but in order to just in order to enter in data, um, it it can be sometimes uh, it, it is straightforward to enter data into Excel. You can just click a box and you can start typing. Uh, whatever you want to type into the box, uh, whatever you want. Uh, but there are some little trick, little things to kind of keep in mind is that um, when you first start typing in a box, uh, in order to go, like you can actually backspace. So if you make a mistake, you can backspace and go back. But the arrow keys for the first time that you start entering into a box do not work because basically the arrow keys will move you to different boxes. Uh, if you wanted to be able to use the arrow key in something, what you have to do is you have to click up here into this entry box on the top here. And then up here, I can now move my cursor back and forth uh, through the uh, what I've, I've entered in here. Um, and so that's the way if you want to be able to change something that you've entered in a cell. Like if I come over here and I've, I've entered in whatever you want here in the cell up here. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just zoom in a bit to kind of make this look a little larger on the stream so it makes it a little easier to follow along. So uh, there we are with whatever you want uh, kind of entered. If I wanted to change this here, I can click on the, um, the box that I was working on there. And then up here, I can then go and I can, oh, I can actually double, I can actually double click on it. So if I double click, I can then actually click wherever I want to and such and then delete uh, what's entered in there or I can click it once and then I can click up in the box up here and be able to change uh, how I want it to enter in. Once you've entered in something like you can see here I've entered in whatever you want and it, it's too long for this A1 cell here so if I want to if I move my mouse up next to A uh, right in between A and B the line that's on there you'll see my cursor changes from this little plus sign or uh, or the arrow that I normally have, it changes to this little black arrow that points left and right. If I click on this here, I can uh, I can actually extend the cell out to another length. If I double click this here, it'll automatically extend the length the way that it needs to be. Um, let's see. Information. Yeah, I'm just getting some air right on. I'm actually going to do a quick change on my stream here quickly. I'm going to be right back. Stay right here. It will be back in just a second. Okay, so I Okay, so I don't know if that helped at all, but uh we'll keep going now. Okay, so that's so entering in things, you're basically able to just click and start typing in kind of what you want to do. Now, in your exercises, the first exercise here is that we have a table entered in. Uh, you can see if I hold up to the camera here, it's probably a mirrored image, but you can still see that there's a table there on that first page. Uh, we're going to work on duplicating this table in our, in our uh, spreadsheet here. 
So right up here under A, I'm going to put in big W supermarket sales. And then down a line, um, and we're going to actually make this back to its normal size. Uh, we're going to put in our headings. Quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, oops. Quarter three and quarter four. And then total sales. And then down underneath, we're going to do we have apples, we have grapes, we have oranges, and we have pears. I'm going to put in the numbers here. So. So I'm going to encourage all of you to kind of go off to your own um, uh, spreadsheets and start copying in the table that's here. I'm going to continue filling out the one that I have here. Um, and so I will give you about five minutes to kind of do this here. So about 2.35 or a different time for you guys. So in about five minutes, I will continue. Uh, and if you have any questions, please ask them in the chat. here okay so we were working on entering in the um uh the table for the big w supermarket sales into our excel spreadsheet uh, i hope everybody has done that uh with that entered there uh let's see what are we going to try to do uh do, 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 file, do we open printing, entering okay so we've duplicated the table in the handout um so now let's actually kind of do some uh, basic kind of uh, functions into Excel. Now that we have data entered into Excel, we can kind of work on applying some different functions onto there. So the first most basic function that we do in Excel is that we, uh, uh, we want to do sums. We want to add up numbers that we've entered into place. And so there is uh, a really easy, what they call sum function. You can kind of see that on the front page of your handout. Uh, that using the function uh, sum, we can use it to add together numbers. And so in order to start working on a function, so like if we want to add in the total sales of apples, uh, we come over here to this box right next to them there, and we start entering a function by entering in the equals sign. The equals sign tells Excel that we are going to be entering a function into this box, which means that it's going to expect to look for a function name and what it calls arguments. The arguments are the data that it's pulling to do that function or formula. So the formula that we're going to do or the function that we're going to enter in is called sum. And we're going to type in sum. And you'll see as I start typing it, Excel starts offering kind of a kind of uh, suggestions for the different things you're typing. So you can see there's actually a bunch of different sums that we can, we can do in Excel. Uh, right now, we just want this very simple sum. Uh, so once I do that, I'm going to come down and I'm going to click on this sum here. I'm going to actually double click on it. And what it'll do now is it'll enter it in, it'll put in this parentheses. And then underneath, it's going to tell me, it's going to show me the formula. It's going to go sum. And then in parentheses, it's going to show number one, number two, separated by a comma. And so what that tells us that in order to do a sum, we first put in the first number that we want to enter, which is going to be, I could type in 521 because that's the number here. But uh, if I typed in 521, 521, uh, what that's going to mean is that whenever it does this sum, it's always going to start off with 521. Well, what happens if I go in and change this number here? Uh, it will, I would have to go over here and change the sum. One of the neat things about Excel is that you can actually put in references to other cells so that if the information in that cell changes, the formula will also recalculate the way that it wants. So instead of putting in 521, the value that's here, I'm going to put in the address of the cell. The address of the cell is found by looking at the column letter up here on the top. So this is B. So this is in column B. And then the row number. So over here, this is row 4. So it's going to be B4. So I'm going to type in B4. And now you can see, as soon as I typed in B4, it, it turned this blue instead of black, like everything else I've been typing in. 
and you can see it drew a blue box around here. So that links up the, the, the blue number over here is that blue box. So you actually get this kind of instant um, verification that, the, that you've entered in the right cell. And then what happens is I want to enter in another number. So I'm going to hit comma. And what that does is you can see right down here on my little uh, kind of guide to how to write this formula here, number two is now written in bold. So now what I'm gonna do, I wanna put the second number that I wanna put in, which is going to be this quarter two number here. So just like before, it's, I look for the column number, column letter first, it's C, and then we look at the row number four, so four. And now you can see this is this little reddish color there and it puts this little red box around that. I'm gonna do the same thing for the other two uh, cells. So D4 and E4. And now what happens is I'm going to close the formula with a parenthesis, with a parenthesis. And that tells, that's telling Excel that, okay, there's not going to be any other numbers after E4. And then and I'm just going to hit the enter key and that will then trigger the, uh, the formula to calculate. And so there's my calculation, 2175. Um, so there was 2,175 apples sold during the year of this fictional supermarket. Uh, they probably were not dealing with the coronavirus um, going on. Uh, and now I can do the same. So it can get tedious typing in uh, all four numbers. What happens if I had like a list of 15 different numbers going across and I wanted to add them all together? And they're all next to each other, all through. Or in this case, I have four of them right next to each other. If I wanted to sum these together to do the same thing I just did before, I'd have to do equals, sum, open parentheses, and then I'd have to type in uh, B5, comma, C5. It can get tedious typing in all those individual cell addresses. So Excel has a shortcut. If you have a bunch of cells that are concurrent to each other or all aligned along the same column or, um, or row, like this here, you can, um, I, can, I can put in the start of the numbers that I want to add. So in this case, I want to start with B5, B5. So you can see there's my little blue box drawn around there, drawing the B there. And instead of doing a comma, I'm going to do a colon. So I'm going to do the colon sign. So you can see I, I entered in a little colon here. And what the colon says, it tells Excel to start at the, the first cell that I entered there and then continue until you get to the last cell that I enter. In this case, I'm going to enter E5, E5. And now you can see, instead of each cell being an individual color like it was up here, it's all blue, just like this whole sequence here. And now I'm going to close the parentheses, and you can see that this now summed up that whole thing. Now you might be skeptical, did this actually really add in all of those numbers there? What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to A. This is the one that we did where we added in everything individually. And you can see when I click on it, it's, it still shows up as the number here. But if I double click on it, I get my formula. So that goes back to being able to edit the formula there again. Uh, so if I go here and I type in instead equals sum, and I'm gonna do parentheses, I'm gonna do B4 colon uh, E4 and close parentheses, you can see I get that same sum as I did there, adding them up all individually. Uh, so we're going to do that for each of these total sales here. I'm going to do equals sum B6 to E6, 6. And then down here equals sum B7 to E7. And there's all my, there's my total sales of the individual fruits. I'm going to go in. So you can also do the same thing. We've just did it with the rows. I can also do the same thing with columns. So if I wanted to add up the total sales here for quarter one, I can do equals sum, that same sum function. I can start with B4, just like I did with the other ones, B4, colon, we can go down to B7. And now you can see instead of drawing the box horizontally across the row, it draws it vertically along the column there. Uh, and then I'm gonna close that there and hit enter. And so there's that total there. Now. Excel also has another useful little trick uh, that's really convenient as you're working with kind of doing sums and, and working with basic data entered in here. I've entered this formula here, and if I go and look at this formula, you can see it's B4 to B7. So it's everything in B, and the formula lives in the B column. 
Um, if I wanted to be able to do the same for I want to do the same formula across across the row for the other three quarters. Uh, I wanted to do C4 through C7 in the C column. So what I can do actually is if you look at the bot when I have this when I click on the cell here and such, there's this little box down in the bottom right corner. Uh, if I put my mouse over it, you can see my mouse goes from this white cross. If I put my mouse over it, it goes to this black cross here. And if I'm going to click and I'm going to actually drag. I'm going to click on that little box with the black cross uh, cursor. And I'm going to drag it across this row all the way to quarter four. And then I'm going to let it go. And what that does actually is if I go in and click and double click on here and such, you can see now that instead of it being a copy of this formula they did there, it actually does C4 to C7. What that does is that duplicates the formula that was in your first box that we started off, but then adjusts it, it increments it as it goes from left to right. That also works vertically. So if I take this, my sum, B5 to E5, I'm going to put this over here. Oh, yep, hold on. Control C. Oh, come on. Control V. There we go. So my sum, B5 to E5, if I drag this down, um, it will then do the same sum, B6 to E6, B7 to E7. It will still do the same thing uh, vertically. So by clicking on that little box down in the corner, it allows you, and, and dragging it down, it allows you to drag that formula. Uh, and it have that formula updated for each different row or each different column that up like I go this way here It's just gonna actually what did it get? That's weird. Um, it automatically imp increments them there So yeah, so I'm just gonna delete these Oop. and delete these um, You can also actually what I'm going to do is we're going to You can also drag it up so I can take this and I can go up to the column right up there Um there is actually one more kind of neat thing that it can do, actually. If I do this here, and I want, uh, suppose I have like a really long line here and such. If I come up here and double click on this box down here, it will actually go down and automatically fill in the formulas going down the edge there. So I'm going to give you about another five minutes. Go in, play around with the formulas. Uh, I'm going to type it right up here in the box up here equals sum. Um, and then you'll do the numbers and the number two. If you have any questions, please ask me in the chat. So I'll give you about five minutes to kind of continue working on. And so fill in the, the total sales in this uh, in the F column over here, and then the the total like sales for each quarter down here in the the row eight uh, for the table that we're working on. And if you have any questions, ask me in the chat.
All right, so has everybody done some practice with the formulas in their Excel spreadsheets? So we've done some basic math. So now what we're going to do with the with the table that we have here is that we're going to look at doing uh, a chart or a graph with the table that we have here. So it used to be a lot more complicated making a graph in Excel, um, but they've made it a lot easier. And they actually, in some ways, Excel even tries to anticipate what you want to be able to do. Um, it is important that when you build a graph using uh, data in Excel that you actually build your, your data, you organize your data in a way. Uh, so if you know you're going to use it to pick a graph, you should, you should assemble your data in a way to make it easier for the graph to understand. So what that types includes is being able to put labels, what they call header rows. So you're able to label kind of what the data is underneath. And then also what they call a label column. So you actually are labeling kind of what the different rows are as well too. That helps define the labels and helps keep track of like what data is being shown up in your chart. So if you look at the chart and it doesn't seem to look right, you can at least get a sense of like where it's possibly getting that information wrong. So once you uh, have entered in your data and you have it in the format that you're ready so it can go to make a graph there and such, you'll want to select the data in order to make the graph. Now, in Excel, there's a several different ways that you can select things. If I click uh, on this cell here, I'm selecting this individual cell. If I click and drag, I'm able to select multiple cells, and I can drag right to left. I can drag up or down. I can also drag diagonally, and if I drag diagonally, it drags both the cell and the, um, and the, or the column and the row. So like you can see, I go here, and now it gets both B and 4. Go down here, it gets C and 5. So what happens is I can select this by taking this and going diagonally all the way down to this bottom uh, right corner. Now, if you are having difficulty with uh, selecting things with the mouse or um, your data, say, runs on down below into like a lower section there, sometimes when you start selecting things and it goes down, when you start moving down, it can actually scroll really quickly and you can easily move past um, where you want to go. Uh, you can also select things with your keyboard. So if I go and click on... Um, or you can, also, you can also click to select things. So if I go up here and click my top left corner, product, and then I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard, so either the left or right shift key, and I'm going to come over here. I'm not dragging. I'm just going to come over here, and I'm going to click on F. And you can see now what it did was it selected from where I started here all the way to where I ended. This works horizontally. It works vertically, up and down. It also works diagonally, and what Shift will do is Shift will select everything between your start point, where you, where you click the first time, and your end point, wherever you click the second time. So whether you do it diagonally, it will select both rows and columns, or if you select horizontally, it will just select the row. Vertically, it will just do vertical there. Uh, if, you hold, if you select something and you hold down the Control key, you're actually able to select things without selecting them in between. So you can actually select specific cells. Uh, and we'll look at that in a second when we actually do uh, one of our next exercises that we do. But in this case, we want to be able to select the data for our uh, graph here. So I'm going to start here at the product. I'm going to hold down my Shift key. And I'm going to click down here into this, uh, this F8 cell here so that I have my whole data here selected. And I'm going to come up here to my Insert tab on my ribbon. And in the insert tab, there's this chart section right here. And so there's a bunch of different charts that you can do. There, there's bar graphs, there's line graphs, there's pie charts, there's scatter plots, there's a whole bunch of different things. So you can do maps. There's a, there's a whole ton of different things that Excel can do. Uh, for the purposes of this exercise here, we're just going to do a simple bar chart. I'm going to click here, and I'm actually just, I, there, there are a whole bunch of different things I can click here. I'm just going to click on this, actually, and what it'll do is it'll open up a menu here. I can do 2D, I can do 3D, and it'll actually show you down below, down here, uh, a preview of what that cell, of what that will look like. I can do it horizontally, I can do it vertically. We're just going to, actually, you know, the 3D ones are kind of fun. Let's just do a, um, uh, we'll do with this 3D clustered Oops. Yeah, let's do this 3D clustered one here. Uh, so I'm going to click on that. And so you can see actually now is that it kind of didn't pull exactly all of the information correctly that we want. Um, it did get our quarters, so it got our quarters going across the top. 
but it also pulled in this product thing. So we realized we don't really want to have that product line selected. Uh, so what I'm going to do is if I come over here, I can come over and I can deselect product. Actually, that's still going to do it. Um, let's see if I... Okay, so what we're going to do actually is we're going to delete this chart. So I can do that by clicking on the edge of the chart and clicking delete. And so what we're going to do now is I'm going to select this just like I did before. And I'm going to hit control on product. I'm going to hit control and click on product. Now we're going to go insert chart 3D. Nope, it's still hold that all in there. Okay, hold on. We'll go in and play around with this in a slightly different way. So select everything, insert graph 3D column. There we go. All right, so you'll notice now that once we've entered this in, uh, we get a new tab, set of tabs up here on the top in our ribbon here. We have our chart design and we have the format. The format allows you to actually change things like colors and the look of the, the graph. Uh, we're not going to really cover this during this class here, but you can kind of go in and kind of play around with that there if you want to change the different themes and styles and colors that it's using. We are going to look at this chart design here. You can actually change like the start chart styles or the colors over here. So like, if I wanted to do different colors, I can choose them quite easily. I wouldn't leave the colors they are because I kind of like the way that they are there. Um, but more importantly, you'll notice that okay, I got my labels here, but this here is just saying series one, series two, series three. We're gonna, it's not pulling in the labels that it needs properly over there. Um, and we still have this product column there. So we need to kind of fix some of the issues that we have in this graph here. And you can do that up here on the top. There's this select data. Um, uh, there's this select data column up here. So we're going to click this here. And this here shows the data that got selected. You can kind of see if I move this, you can actually move all this stuff around as necessary. I'm going to move this over to here so we can actually see this. Actually, I'm going to shrink this a bit. So you can actually see I can resize, I can shrink the graph uh, using the little handles that are around the outside of there. Um, and we're going to go up here. I'm going to do select data. And so in here where it's a series one, series two, series three, um, I want to actually go and edit and oop, trying to see if I can actually get it to place which what does that do I'm trying to get it so that it'll actually like pull in the right names and I might be off on something no, I'm gonna check something here bear with me on this it's not something I do a lot all the time so let's see if I get rid of that actually you know what? let's just go here. I just want the data I don't want the totals let's try that And so, so this is the kind of thing that you have to do sometimes in Excel. You, you get there and you kind of play around with things to get it to operate the way that you want it to do. There we go. So what I did was I got rid of the, the products box there, which was kind of throwing off the automatic chart creation. Um, and then I also got rid of the total, so I don't have these big spikes happening there. So it kind of makes our chart look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. And so now we get quarter one. And we can kind of see the difference between the apples. And down here, it finally pulled those names in properly. This is what I was trying to get there before. So we have apples, grapes, oranges, and pears. I could also do something like, okay, so I'm looking at here's quarter one. Here's the sales. Um, if I go over here to select data and I swap these, I can actually then see, okay, here's all my apples sold. Here's how they sold through quarter one, quarter two, if I wanted to just kind of compare. So you can actually switch Using the switch row or column, you can kind of switch which one shows up on the axis. So whether it's showing up on the, um, uh, whether it's the legend, the series there, or whether it's the labels there. And then of course the Y is always gonna be kind of the numbers to kind of measure everything that's on there. Uh, so that's our chart. You can come up here, we can edit our chart title. So this is a uh, big, big W supermarket sales. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually walk through that process one more time. Uh, let's see, so you're going to have this written here. Um, I'm going to walk through this process one more time uh, and I'm going to have you go off and spend about five minutes kind of making your own chart. Play around in the insert here, play around with some of the different charts. If I, so go in and see what it looks like as a line graph. Uh, see how it looks on the bar. Um, play around with the different bar graphs and see how they re how they act uh, differently on there. 
So once again, the process that we're going to follow is I'm going to come up here. I'm going to delete this products here because that was just throwing off kind of the, the chart creation. And then I'm going to drag. And so this also gets you an idea when you're actually making, um, uh, when you're making your table for a graph, uh, you kind of want to be able, you want to have your label going across your columns, which is uh, your header row there. And you also want to have a header column there because it's able to pull that information, but leave this empty so that, because it kind of throws things off sometimes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to drag down or I can shift click down to there. I'm going to select, I, I don't want the total sales this time. Um, though I guess I could, you know, if I grab the total sales, uh, what it will do actually now is it will actually have a, a section down at the end that will have the total sales. I can compare the total sales for all the different fruits. So I'm going to select the data that I want to have in my chart or my graph. I'm going to go to my insert tab and then come over here. I'm going to click on the bar, insert bar or column graph. And this time I'm going to actually just do a 2D column graph. So I'm going to click on this here and I'm going to click on 2D. And now you can see there's, uh, there's my quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four, and then the total sales. And all of these here added up should be, so like if I stacked all these blue boxes on top of each other, they should equal this one here. You notice when I put my mouse over this box, it actually tells me what the value is. So it's a way that you can actually see that uh, information. And you can actually show that onto the chart as well too. Uh, so actually, we'll come back to that there. So everybody go off and make your chart. So follow the steps. Choose your the data that you want, um, and then go to Insert tab and choose a 3D or 2D bar graph, and I'll give you about five minutes, and then we'll continue on with the next step. And if you have any questions, please ask them in the chat.
All right, so has everybody spent some time creating their charts in their Excel file? Excellent. So let's actually look at some of the stuff that we're able to do with our chart here once we have it in there. So as you can see, I was able to click on the chart title up here, and I was actually, so if I click on the chart title, I can double click and I can enter in kind of whatever I want into here. Um, I can enter in whatever I want as the title there. In this case, I'm just going to make it match the title that I have on my data, which is Big W Supermarket Sales. Now there's things that you can do to kind of help make your chart a little bit more readable. So for example, one thing is we might, might want to be able to put, um, say maybe at the top of all of these here, the number that it actually, that, that it is. So instead of me trying to figure out, is this 510? Is this, what is that actually? Um, it's 560. So I was even, I wasn't even close looking at this. This was five sixty because this is I mean this is a five hundred dollar or the five hundred count gap there and such. And the reason why that gap is so big is because of our total sales over there. Um, I actually go in and turn off the total sales. There we go. Uh, this becomes a little bit easier to read. But still, it's like okay, is it a guess here between is this five fifty, five sixty, five seventy on there? You can actually if we come up here to the top left. So we're still in our chart design tab on here. If I come up here to the top left where it says add chart element, I'm going to click on this here, and you're going to see I have this little menu that's going to open up down below here. And if I go down to uh, data labels, I can actually turn on, and you can see if I put my mouse over it, it gives me a little preview, and I actually I want to do outside end. So if I put this out here, um, if I put this up there, it will then put the, the data entry on top. So now it makes it kind of a little bit easier to read. I can see, okay, you can easily visually compare that apples sell a lot better than grapes, oranges, or pears. Um, it would be interesting to see if this chart actually had bananas on there, because bananas are the number one selling fruit in the United States, so they would probably be up above apples. But still in our chart here for big mar for the Big W market supermarket, which I misspelled supermarket, anyway, um, big, uh, people seem to like to buy their apples. But now I'm able to actually also see the actual data number that makes up this bar there and so, so I can visually compare but then can also numerically compare and you can add in a lot of different uh, things as you go on you can add in um, uh, let's see where is this going okay so if I over here I can actually show kind of the um, whether or not like the numbers are showing up on the side there I can actually put in uh, titles for the axes so like here I can say the quarters if I wanted to, I can, so I can enter this, I can say this is now quarters. So we, are, we already know that with quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. Um, and then over here, I can actually then say add in a uh, vertical there, and I can type in uh, number sold. Because it's always important to label your axes so that somebody reading your graph knows what they're looking at. It's very easy to be misleading in presenting data by not labeling things properly. Um, I mean, for example, if I did something logarithmic where between here to here, it jumped from 400 to 1,000 where these here and such, is that it could make things kind of show up a little bit differently. So be careful in how you design and present your graph because you want to make sure that it presents things as accurately as possible. So have there been any questions about graphs or charts? Uh, if not, we're gonna move on to a little bit more practice in, uh, in formulas. Um, we're gonna go look at, there's a second document that if you went to the, um, uh, if you went to the uh, handout page that's up in the link right there above my head, um, if you go to that there, then, um, there is an Excel spreadsheet in there called Formulas Practice, and I it up right here. And Formulas Practice, all it is, is I'm gonna zoom in to make this a little bit easier to read on the stream. Uh, it's just like a bunch of, it's just some randomly assigned numbers that we're gonna go do, and we're gonna do some Formulas Practice, uh, writing these formulas. So I have a little to-do list here of like four different tasks to do, so four different formulas, some four basic um, uh, arithmetic functions that we're gonna do. Uh, you can put these functions anywhere else. I'm going to do them over here in this H column just to kind of keep them away from my data here and kind of make something kind of nice and neat over there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually over in G, I'm just going to put in my little labels. I'm going to put A, B, C, and D to reflect 
A, B, C, and D over there. So A asks us to add cells A2, A4, and A6 together. Now, if you remember uh, from when I was showing you how to do the sums before, adding cells is just the sum function. So equals sum in order to start. Um, I could then double click on sum down here, which will then open up the parentheses and then start showing me my guide of what sum is looking for. So I want to add A2, A4, and A6 over here. Now I could do this two different ways, as, I, as, I, as we saw before. I can do A2, comma, A4. And as you see, as I type in the letters over here, or the numbers, or the, the cell addresses over here, it automatically selects them over there. You can also, uh, in Excel, I can go over here, like, so I want to add an A6, I can click A6. Oh, whoop, that didn't do it. Okay, so actually, let me, if I go equals sum, and now I do A4. A, what are you doing? It's not doing what I wanted to do. Okay, equals sum A4, 8, A4, A2, A4, there we go. So I'm holding down the control key, and now I'm able to select my different cells. And you can see as I click them, it automatically fills them in there and such. So you don't always have to try to figure out, especially if you have like a really big table, sometimes it can be hard to figure out kind of exactly what the column or the row is uh, for a specific uh, entry on there and such. So you can go over and you can kind of, if you hold down the control key, you can actually then select and it'll automatically enter them in. Now, if you remember when I also first demonstrated this year with selecting things, the control key allows you to select, holding control and clicking, allows you to select things without selecting what's in between them. Um, if I do the shift key, so if I shift click down to there, it'll select everything in between. You can see it automatically fills in the A2 colon A6. So there's that colon uh, kind of notation that I showed you before that does everything in between. So if I did this, what this does is this actually adds in A2, A3, A4, A5, and A16. This will give me the same answer that I had before which if I did A2, A4, and A6 um, because A3 and A5 are assumed to be zero. But if I do this and then I put in a number into here, it will automatically change this sum. Okay, actually, let me show you. So if I do that there and I go in and I type a five into there, you can see this automatically updated to 33. Uh, and that's the reason is because this cell here is included inside of the sum. But if I do this, so there's my, there's my still my equal. It's 28 that I had before. I come over here, now I type in five, uh, enter. You can see it doesn't include it, it doesn't add it into there because the, the A3 is not included in the cell or in the math in the sum. So depending on how you want to do things, if I, if I wanted to, if I knew I was going to be adding in numbers into A3 and A5, like I suppose it's data that I haven't received yet, and I'm going to be coming back and entering it in later, um, I can leave them blank, and then I can include them in my sum, and so then when I get them, I can enter in that information. Or if I know that they're supposed to be blank and I want to ignore what's supposed to be in A3 and A5, I can then do my separate individual cells like I did here. Okay, so moving on. Um, and I'm going to give you all the chance to kind of, after I've walked through each of these different formulas, go and kind of practice it yourself. And if you have questions, you can ask me in the chat. So for B, B is multiply cells B3, B5, and B7. Now, if we, if you look at the front page of the handout at the bottom, there is a little uh, graph in there. So you know what? I can actually, I can actually just show you. <laughs> Why am I trying to show it to the camera? I can actually just open it up and show it over here. So yeah, so right over here, um, I have a, I have kind of basically a simple table here kind of showing uh, the symbol method. You could type in equals A2, A4, A6, uh, and it'll do the sum there and such. But using the, um, the sum function here, it's just good practice to get into because it, it works the way that all the other functions do. And it's just, it's just a good practice to kind of be consistent with how you work with things. So we go over here and look at multiplication because we're we want to do a multiplication. I could just put in um, equals whatever the cells are with the little star with the asterisks in between to signify multiplication. 
but there's also a product function. So the product function works the same way that the sum function does. If I go back to Excel and I show it here, we go to equals product, and I'm gonna double click on product, and you can see right down here, number one, number two, it works the same way that the sum does. And so we're gonna do B3. So we're gonna do B3, and I'm gonna do comma, B5, and B7. And we've closed parentheses, and this will now multiply all of those numbers together. Uh, once again, I could also do the same thing with uh, the click selection. So click, control click, control click. Select my three cells, hit enter. There's my math there. I can also do a product with a range of cells. Product, I can do click, shift click down and I'm selecting the range of cells. And these are all the same. The difference between these two and this one is that this one here is gonna include everything, these three cells as well as what's in between them. So if I go in and add in another number, it will affect this number here because it's being included with the formula. So let's move on to C, so divide cells. Now division is a little bit uh, more difficult in uh, Excel than summing or products. Um, so you can actually, interestingly enough, the sum function can actually work to include other, f other mathematical functions. So if I do equals sum, and now what happens is I can then actually do division between so if I do 100, and instead of doing a comma to indicate the next number, I can hit the slash. Uh, the slash key is, because if you ever like, written fractions, you write the fraction as 1 slash 2 for 1 half, or 3 slash 4 for 3 quarters. Um, the slash is actually a notation for division. So I can do 100 divided by 5 divided by 4. And so the way that this works is, because math can be tricky with the order on how it does things, because... 100 divided by 5 and then divided by 4 is different than 100 divided by 5 fourths. Um, is it? I have to actually see if that math uh, goes out differently and such. I can't mentally think of it as such. Um, that ends up being 5. Because what it does actually is if we go look at this function here, is that we have 100 divided by 5, which is 20, and then that answer there divided by 4, which is 5. Um, I'm actually curious about 5 fourths is 1.25. I'm kind of getting off track here, but I'm just kind of curious to see. Okay, yeah, so that's, uh, <laughs> that ends up being a very different uh, answer. Um, so the division, you can actually use the sum function strangely enough. Um, and then instead of using commas between your different numbers, um, in this case, actually, I physically entered the numbers. I can actually go in and I can actually, there we go, um, put in the cell, which is how I properly should do it. I found a typo. Um, oh, because there's an extra. Okay, so one of the nice things about Excel nowadays, too, is, is that it does do some error checking. So it says, hey, we found a typo. We tried to correct it. And so what I did was there's actually an extra parenthesis in there. And it's saying, okay, get rid of that parenthesis. And it's like, yeah, okay, you know, I want that to do that there. And you can see there's my number five. And now, why did I do the, the cell address again instead of doing uh, the direct numbers like I typed the first time? Is that if I, if I end up changing these numbers, uh, it will automatically update the formula that I do. So that's one of the beauties that Excel allows you to do. Is you could go in and you can build a table. If you, if you need to get some work done and you haven't gotten all your data yet, you can go in and you can build a table using um, dummy information and you can write all your formulas and kind of make all your formulas work. And then when you get the actual data, you can go in and plug that all into the right place and then all your formulas will calculate to the right thing. Um, actually, I was supposed to do C, wasn't I? Uh, I'm not following the directions I wrote to myself. So let's do C, C, C. Oh, nope, not. that's not right. Slash, there we go. That's much better. And I X, okay, 
Yes, I actually put that that um, parenthesis in there again. And now finally, we have our subtraction. So subtraction is the fourth of our uh, standard arithmetic uh, properties. You know, I think I actually probably originally wrote this here to be uh, these reversed. Actually, that division was supposed to be D, but because um, it ends up being a nice, neater number, but whatever. Um, so here we want to do subtraction. And so subtraction also can be done with the sum function. So I can do equals sum parentheses. And then instead of putting a comma like we do with the normal sum function or putting the slash like we do with the division function, we just use a dash or a minus sign. So I'm going to click on D. I'm going to hit dash. I'm going to hit D2. I'm going to hit there. And I'm going to hit D4. And I'm going to close to enter. There's uh, 91. So 100 minus 5 is 95. Minus 4 is 91. Uh, so there's some of our basic arithmetic functions. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that if you, you can actually do pretty complex um, uh, formulas. Like I can do a product of, say, two sums. So sum, I can put my sum function into there. And let's do sum of uh, B2. Uh, B5, or B3, B5, and B7. So my, my B column. So I can do the sum of those three numbers. So this year, if you look down here, uh, my little guide down here, if I go back into this year, you can actually see right now it's showing me the sum and showing me the different numbers to make up my sum there. I close the parentheses, and now I'm back in product. This whole sum, if I put a comma here, everything be before the comma all the way to the parentheses, this now reads in the product function as one number. Because what it's going to do is it's going to add these together and then do the product. Um, and then I could do sum of, oh, let's do u. Oh, and I'll just do a shift. So you can actually see I can also do the sum and do a range there. So you can kind of mix and match all these different kind of tools when you're writing functions or formulas in Excel. Uh, you just have to kind of keep sense of kind of where everything is. Here I had to close my parentheses. I'm going to enter. And so now what I've ended up doing is I have the product of these three numbers added together times the numbers here. Because I did this as a range, if I go in and add in 15 in there, it's going to add in a whole another number into that. It's going to change that math. Uh, so any questions on any of that there? Um, it, formulas are kind of the thing that you do kind of have to get in and kind of play around a bit with uh, and try things out. Um, see how they kind of add in. Uh, there are ways to kind of continue practicing formulas. There's this worksheet, um, and you can always ask us questions on there. So I'm going to give you about another five minutes. Go in, practice with the formulas that I just showed you. Do these four to-do kind of things. Uh, try different things. Um, I have the question on here and such. So um, can you make the formula include or ignore new numbers if we add them into the gap there? Uh, and let me know if you have any questions.
All right, so if you've taken the time to kind of practice with the different formulas, were there any questions about that? Uh, it does not seem to be. So we've kind of reached the end of what we have for our basic Excel class here. Uh, coming up, uh, we have in our uh, schedule coming up tomorrow, um, this is our schedule for the month of April here. So tomorrow I'm gonna be doing basic PowerPoint from the same time, April 2nd from two to 4 p.m. Hopefully we will not have as many technical difficulties as we had during this class. Uh, and then next week, we're going to be going through the whole range starting again on Tuesday. We're going to be doing Microsoft Word. Thursday or Wednesday is going to be intermediate Microsoft Excel. And then Thursday is going to be intermediate PowerPoint. The following week, I'm going to be doing an advanced Word class. And the Microsoft Office Integrated, which looks at using PowerPoint, Excel, and Word all together um, as a singular kind of tool. And then finally, the following week on Tuesday, I'm going to be doing it in HTML and CSS class. Uh, here on YouTube. So same place, uh, same time, 2 to 4 p.m. each afternoon. Uh, all the handouts right now, I just have the handouts for yesterday's class and today's class. I will be adding in the handout for PowerPoint into here and the other classes as they come up. Uh, if you've attended this class and you've enjoyed it, I do encourage you to come to the handout link and um, actually, and go to, go to the handout uh, page, the online tech classes. Uh, so fergusonlibrary.org slash online dash tech dash classes and click the survey link and complete a survey. Um, it, it works well for our stats there. Uh, so please click the survey link and complete the survey. And please join me tomorrow for introduction to PowerPoint. So I'll hang around if there's any more questions. Uh, oh, finally, I keep always forgetting one more thing uh, that we do have if you want to kind of continue your study in Microsoft Excel. To change over here sorry about the music i have to fix some of my settings on there is at the bottom page of your handout actually do I have the handout open don't i okay. um uh, i do have uh, some information about our lynda.com subscription so the ferguson library does offer you access to lynda.com and they do offer a wide range of uh lessons for learning microsoft office including microsoft excel so if you want to try it out, you can go here to lynda.com slash portal slash patron entry there. If you just go to lynda.com, they're going to want to charge you a subscription, but we are already paying that there. So if you go to this link here, I'm going to click on it yeah, and allow. Uh, this will take me out to, oops, I need to show, oh, you know, what? I just realized I wasn't showing you that, was I? Let me go back and do this here. Okay, so yeah, so lynda.com, you want to go to this address here. This is also available at a couple places on our fergusonlibrary.org website. When you click on that, it will take you to, I'm clicking on the wrong thing. It will take you to lynda.com here where you will want to sign in with your library card number and your PIN. And then right up here under the library is all the different lessons that you can kind of learn. And so if you come under here under business, here's Excel. I have outlined a, uh, a few courses to kind of cover what we've done here in the class if you want to kind of go over it again or uh, kind of refresh or learn on there. So I encourage you to, if you want to continue your learning with uh, Microsoft Excel, to go check out uh, lynda.com. So once again, before I close everything up, here is the link for the uh, survey. Uh, please go and complete the survey if you uh, enjoyed this class, and I hope to see you tomorrow for Microsoft PowerPoint. And once again, let me know if there are any questions in the comments or in the chat. With that, I thank you for everybody who came and attended this class, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you, and have a good afternoon. If you have any questions, any further questions, please ask them in our um, uh, in the online chat that the Ferguson Library has at fergusonlibrary.org, or you can contact us using the contact us uh, form on our website. Thank you, and I hope everybody stays safe and healthy.